Hi there, Gray Wolf owners. Today in your 2016 Forest River Gray Wolf, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Solaris Slide Topper. We are gonna be using the 13 foot one inch model today, but I highly recommend you measure yours and choose the appropriate one as they could potentially be a different size slide out on your Gray Wolf. So this is what our slide out looks like when it's installed. You can see here that with our slide out extended, our slide topper covers the entire top of it has a subtle angle to it to allow moisture to drain right off the top. The awning will prevent any debris from collecting on top of your slide out and debris such as like pine needles, leaves, tree sap, small sticks and twigs, little acorn shells, all that stuff that collect, can collect on top of here. Whenever you move your slide out in, if you don't clean that debris away, and even if you do clean like the, the large particles, there can still be smaller particles and that sap and stuff there that can deteriorate your seals and cause leaks down the line. By installing a slide topper like this, we can prevent all that debris from falling onto the top of our slide out, greatly minimizing any maintenance that we need to perform here and extending the life of the seals of our slide out. So I do highly recommend them for people, especially if you spend a lot of time out there at campsites where there's a real heavy foliage, a lot of trees. Those are the areas where this is really gonna make a big difference. Um, preventing on how much maintenance you have to do. If you don't have something like this and you go to those camp areas, I'd recommend getting out and cleaning this off every single time, cleaning your seals before you slide your slide out in to protect them. So that can be a pretty lengthy uh, experience getting on top of here, cleaning this off and preparing it for your next trip. It can be quite exhausting. So to, again, minimize that, just add one of these onto your slide out and you don't know, no longer have to worry about that. You can probably go several seasons before you need to get up here and take a look and uh, clean it out again. We do also have different colors available. So if black's really not your, uh, your style, um, you can get it in white as well. We also have replacement awning fabrics here at e-trailer. So if you do already have an existing slide out and maybe a large branch or something happened to fall and tear your slide topper, you, uh, you can get replacements here and they'll install right into the existing bracketry that you have. The um, one thing that I would consider when you're looking at these is definitely double check your measurements, making sure that you're getting the correct one for your motorhome. And then also make sure you add some butyl tape to your cart. Uh, Cause when you go to install this onto your RV or motorhome, you are gonna have to run some fasteners directly into the walls here. And we wanna make sure that no moisture can enter inside the vehicle. And we've got a lot of different widths and sizes of butyl tape. So you can get those to match up to your bracketry for your slide topper here. So now that we've covered some of the features of our slide topper, why don't you follow along with me and we'll show you how to get it installed. Now, before you begin your installation, you wanna make sure that you measure your slide out from edge to edge. So all the way from the edge that you see here, you'll hook it on there and stretch it all the way down and measure to the other side. Now, I've already measured it. We got 153 inches for edge to edge for our slide out. And that's right at about 12 and three quarters of a foot. So about 12, uh, about 12 feet, eight inches roughly. So the awning that you wanna choose for your slide topper, you do wanna have it overhang the side just a little bit. That'll ensure that moisture and debris that's falling off of trees and stuff like that is not gonna be able to get on top of your slide out. So you wanna give yourself about two and a half inches of excess on each side of overhang, and that'll put you in a really good spot for your awning to fit properly over your slide out and give you the proper coverage you're gonna to need to protect it. So we're gonna be using a 13 foot and one inch from Solara here on ours. That's gonna work out with our measurements, but you do wanna make sure you take your measurements because these trailers, they come in so many different floor plans. There's a lot of customization that you have options for when you go to get one of the, buy one. Um, so your slide out could very well be a different size than another trailer that's still a, a gray wolf just like this, and it could be quite different. So it is important you do your measurements. So now we've got our measurements made. We've got our awning parts out here. We know which size we're gonna be using. We do need to apply sealant to the back of these parts before we go to attach them to the side of our RV or trailer because if you don't have uh, any sealant there, all the screws you're gonna run in, moisture can wick into those and damage your, your walls, internal components, wiring. There's a lot of stuff moisture could get down into to cause a lot of harm. So we're gonna be applying it to the back. I've got a couple of different types of butyl tape here that we're gonna be using. Um, this one here is a bit thicker and it's a little bit more putty-like. And then this is actually specifically for RV walls. 
It's a thinner, thinner material. It's a little bit wider, and it is designed for the for those RV walls. There's a little bit of mylar in there, or mylar backing here to make it peel off a little bit easier. So we'll be using this for the mounting plates here. The reason why we're using the RV, the thinner, is for flat surfaces. So if we'll take a quick look at the trailer here, at our wall, we can see that this is a pretty rough surface. It's very, um, there's just a lot of molds and designs in it. And the thinner butyl tape's not gonna seal very well against that surface. But these flat, smooth surfaces here, that RV wall butyl tape's gonna seal very nice and it's not gonna protrude out too far. We're not gonna have a bunch of excess. So there, you might, it's best to uh, get the, per, the best type of butyl tape for the surfaces that you're working with. So we're gonna be using the thicker butyl tape for our railing that's gonna go across the top underneath the drip channel. But for our mounting plates, we're gonna be mounting those actually right here onto the T-edge. You can mount it here on the inside, but I don't like, again, this mounting surface is just not really ideal. Even with the thicker butyl tape, it's really just not ideal to mount to, to this surface. So we're gonna be putting our plates right here. So now we're just gonna apply the butyl tape to the back of our components here. So again, the thinner stuff we're gonna use on these plates and the thicker we're gonna use on the, uh, the channeling, the railing. And we wanna make sure we completely cover up all the screw holes. That's the most important part. So we're just applying this to the back. And it all the way down. And we can trim off the excess. And I'm gonna leave the backing on there for now. I'll peel this off right before we go to apply it to the uh, side of our trailer here. So we're just gonna get all these, all these stuck up right just like this, and then we'll start mounting up our components. And then same with the other butyl tape here, we're gonna apply this to the inside. This is also slightly thinner too as far as the width. It's thicker this way, but it's not quite as wide as the, uh, the other tape, so it fits into our channeling. So we're getting ready to lift our railing up so we can mount it. We've got an assistant here with us, so that way one person can support it on one side while we're holding it up on the other. Go ahead and get your butyl tape peeled off of there. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our railing in place here. I did measure the length of the railing, and then I subtracted the width of our slide out, so that way we know how much excess our railing has. And then I measured, I cut that in half and then measured that on each side. So that way we're gonna have the same amount of overhang on each side. I just made a little mark there. Now where this is positioned, it needs to be between three and three inches up to six inches away from where we're gonna mount our other bracket, which we're gonna mount down here. I've already checked that measurement. We're gonna be okay within that area. Um, but just double check that because you might have to position your rail a little bit higher or lower um, if you're not gonna be within that range. So now we're just gonna hold it up here. Pretty much just line it right up underneath our channeling. We're gonna stay right on the kind of the corrugation that's just below it. So we're gonna give ourselves roughly about an inch gap between the bottom if we just run it along that uh, little seam there where the corrugation kind of starts. So I'm just sticking it in place. We've got it roughly where we need it. We're taking the screws here that come in our kit we're gonna use a number two square bit to run this in place. And then just run these in. These are the button head screws that come in your kit. So I'm gonna get two in this side. And then I'm just gonna go down to that side and we're just gonna get one in there temporarily just to hold it up so that way somebody doesn't have to be over there holding it the whole time. And then we're, we're gonna come back to this side and we're gonna run the screws in all the way down so we can get out any kind of uh, spacing or anything like that. If your assistant is okay with hanging out though, then I recommend just running them straight down with one, uh, one pass. That way there's no chance of having a bow or anything occur in the middle.
Now, when installing your rail, you do want to make sure that the channel here is three inches above your awning. So we're right at about three inches there. We could have went up a little higher, but uh, it was difficult. It'd be more difficult the closer we get to this channeling here to slide our awning in. So we did leave a small gap there. So next we're going to mount our plates and these can be installed in either way. You can install it like this or like this. If you put it like this, the channel here is going to be up a little bit higher. And if you install it like this, the channel is going to be down just a little bit lower. So we're going to position ours in the down position to try to give us as much distance uh, between our railing here as possible. So now for our mylar back tape, we just held it up and we cut it to length. This is thinner. This is designed to go on smooth surfaces since we're going to be mounting it here. The Mylar backing just helps to ensure that everything stays together. It can help to make it a little bit easier to work with. And it is specifically designed for these uh, wall and roofing applications. What we're gonna do is I'm actually just gonna hold it up here to the back side. And that way when I go to stick it in place, it'll stick to my RV wall exactly where I want it. So we're just gonna hold it up there. There are two different orientations you can install this bracket. You can install it either way, like this or like this. You can see this is the grooves where our bracket will slide into place. So if you put it like this, it positions the bracket slightly lower and that puts the bracket slightly higher. We want ours to be slightly lower to give us a little bit more distance. So we're just gonna hold it up here and stick it in place. We're just getting our butyl tape stuck right now. We wanna be as close to the uh, edging here that we can, as we can. So that looks pretty good right there. We've got our butyl tape in place. little straggler we'll just smooth out here and then we're gonna run this into place these are going to use different fasteners than the uh, ones that we had up there so now we got that there we're gonna just hold this up here position it down we're gonna get one screw in and then we can kind of level it out for the second one so I'm gonna start with the one here on the far side I'm just gonna line it up in my bit here my drill here with a number two square bit just like before you can see these are tapered though not a button head like we previously used and then we're just lining this up and running it into place okay now we're just gonna make sure that it's true going across there that looks good and we'll run a, another one into place. All right, that looks good. So now we're just gonna put the rest of our screws in. We got a total of five. Once we get this run in, we're gonna head over to the other side of our motorhome. I mean, our trailer here. And we're gonna run our bracket in the same way. Now we can go ahead and get our brackets slid into place. We're not going to fully tighten them down or anything. We're just going to get them up here. If we look at this bracket, the channels on the back, it actually has two sets of slides that'll slide into place. You got your top set and your lower set. The top set is often used if you're installing it like we are here onto the T molding. The lower set is often used if you're installing it here below the T molding, but that's not always the case. You want to make sure that your, that your slide top has proper clearance so when your slide out goes out, the top of the slide out does not drag the bottom of your uh, new slide out, that your, your slide topper that you're adding on here, otherwise you could rip the fabric. So we're going to start with the upper set since we're on the T-molding, but if we need to, we'll, we'll lift it up if we need to, if we're having clearance issues. So it just slides into place right onto there. You have a couple of set screws here. We're going to leave those loose for now. Uh, so we can adjust those later. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side slid into place as well. So we went ahead and took our awning out of the wrapper and this is the arms that are gonna slide into those brackets that we just installed. If you look at the awning here, this uh, little black piece here, that's for that railing that we installed that goes all the way across. That'll slide into that. So this piece here has a hole in one end. There's a hole in the top of your arm here on the end of your uh, slide topper. And you also got a cap here. And if you look at the cap, there's a cutout. That cutout needs to be facing a hole. So it's going to go together kind of like that. And then we'll run a screw in to attach it. So this is going to slide into your awning 
line up the hole here with the hole in your awning. I actually prefer just to slide it past it, it's what I usually do. And then I take the cap, make sure you insert the cap appropriately. To... And then when you slide it back, the cap stops it to line up with your hole. And then we can use a Phillips bit to run the screw into place. We're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. So we're getting ready to be able to slide our awning into place, but we're gonna do a little bit of prep here on the railing to make it a little bit easier. I just got a trim panel tool, a flat bladed screwdriver, anything like that's gonna work out fine for you. We're just gonna stick it right here in the end, and we're just gonna kinda of just give a little up and down push to spread open the end. That'll make it a little bit easier to slide in, and I've got just a touch of silicone spray I'm gonna put in there as well. And you really only need to do this to the end that you're gonna be sliding it into. You could do it on both ends if you'd like. Um, doesn't really matter. So we've got ourselves a couple extra set of hands here to help us slide our awning into place. We did unroll one roll of it to give us some slack to work with. And then we're just gonna slide our awning right down the railing. And then we left those brackets loose on the end. You could either slide these off, slide them onto your awning, and then slide them back in, or you could slide your awning directly into them, whichever works easiest for you. And at this point, we just kind of need to center it up, and then we can start running down our attachments. So now we're just gonna make it to where it's even. So I'm just gonna measure from the side of my slide out here, just kind of over to the edge here, and then we're gonna make that the same on each side, and then we can run down all of our fasteners. So we've got it adjusted. We've got an even amount of overhang on each side. We can go ahead and secure everything down. So we're gonna do our set screws here first. We're gonna use a number three Allen key. It's raining. We're then switch over to an eight millimeter socket so we can run in the self-tapping screws into the two holes here into our rod. And we are gonna push up ever so slightly on this. Just to try to keep the arm as straight up and down as possible. There's a little bit of play in there and uh, it's not gonna necessarily make or break the installation, but it just make it operate just a little bit smoother if it's straight up and down. So now we're gonna take the small screw that comes in your kit, little black screw. It's gonna use a quarter inch socket this is to secure the fabric into the railing here so it doesn't move around. We want to run this into the cord. And I like to go just inside of where the fabric is, maybe come in about a quarter inch or something like that. And that's where we're going to run it into place. And we're going to do all the same steps over on the other side to get that side secure. So next we're gonna remove the pins that's holding our awning in place. These are installed when you receive it, they're just already in there. So you wanna grab your awning roller, kind of twist it back a little bit, and then we can pull our pin out of here. There we go, we got that one removed. So now we're gonna head over to the other side and get that, that side removed. So I removed the second pin. Now I'm just gonna gently let it roll itself back up. You really don't wanna just let it go. All right, so this looks pretty good. You may or may not wanna consider um, loosening these screws. We're gonna operate it a few times and see that it goes in and out and it rolls up properly. If it's rolling up a little bit crooked where uh, you're you know, starting to get like a little bit of overlap on one side and the other, uh, you might wanna just loosen those screws back up, take those out re-slide your awning in and out a few times, that way it can kind of naturally fall into position and then reinstall those screws. So now we're just gonna operate our slide out and verify that everything opens smoothly. And that completes our installation of Solaris Slide Topper on our 2016 Forest River Gray Wolf.